It's Danny J. Mm -hmm. Personal favorite of mine. What do you think Danny Jess was playing? Don't look. Don't look. Uh, Don't look. Simic Urza. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. Never not the best deck. Yep, nailed it. Zach Allen on Salty Titan. Harlan Fear on Bant Snowblade. You got Brian Koval on Simic Urza. Alex Pastecki playing Bant Snowblade. And James Mangus playing Salty Urza. So, uh, some blue cards are about to be played here. We're going to buckle up. This one could take a while. Harlan Fear. Team Nova going to kick things off with a fetch land. We'll go to Colville, who I did mention is a Star City Games Invitational Champion. That's why he's got that Monk token here on the SCG Tour. But he also won Grand Prix Columbus here mm -hmm. in November. You know who he beat in the finals? I do not. Adam Francais. Ah. Who lost in the finals of an Invitational and a Grand Prix in the month of November. It's tough. It is tough. Well, it's actually not bad. No, I mean, it's obviously you were, fantastic. You know I mean, yeah. You'd love to take the title home with you, but for uh, for Francais, who I'm sure is here this weekend as well, I'd be shocked if he wasn't, given that he's a Northeast Ohio native. He had a nice little run to close out 2019, but uh, a few players got in his way of hoisting two different titles with his uh, Mono Green Tron deck. Gilded Goose off of a breeding pool via Flooded Strand. We'll generate a food token, and we'll head back over to Harlan, who has decided to just bring out the illegible lands here today. Misty Rainforest getting a breeding pool. Now there's a snow-covered island. He'll pass the turn back. Harlan electing to go to Bant Snowblade here, someone who's played Ursa Strategies for a very, very long time. Electing to go with something else. As here is Oko, no Joko. Oko's in. Make a food. Five counters. I think this round's going to be a draw. Excuse me. Si <laughs> Six counters, and I'm not sure that's true, but we'll see. Okay. There's Ice Fang Quaddle. Come back to it. We'll come back to, it. We'll come back to it. Your draw prediction? Is this like your Mana League prediction where it wouldn't get cast and then got cast five seconds later? Well, that one didn't age well, no. That okay, was not. okay. You know what? Next pitch. That's all that is. <laughs> next pitch. Right. Arkham's Astrolabe. Draw a card. There's a Snow-Covered Island. Oko. Moving on up. Food token beatdowns. For Colville, this deck does play a lot like a vintage deck, and he is very, very, very well-versed in vintage. Definitely. So it doesn't surprise me that he was able to win a Grand Prix with this type of strategy, and I'm sure he knows his way around everything that this deck can do. Harlan going to deploy another fetch land here. We'll see where he wants to go next. Do you want to check to see if Koval has Quaddles in his deck? And it looks like he's decided to go towards Emery instead. So here's an Astrolabe for Harlan. He'll draw a card. Harlan last turn, elected not to do anything with the Spell Queller. Interesting to see how he wants to navigate the next couple of turns. He's under some pressure to add to the battlefield here. Otherwise, Oko's going to run away with it. So see how long he's willing to hang tight for. Because this sort of measure here with uh, Cobal being able to use Gilded Goose to make a food and then activate Oko to turn the food into an elk, Cobal really doesn't need to play another spell for the remainder of the game. He can win just doing that. And so Harlan's under some pressure to be doing something. Interesting to see how long he's want, he wants to hold tight for it. Well, there's your Emery. Four cards headed to the graveyard. Not hard to get that card onto the battlefield. Land for the turn is a Scalding Tarn. Oko no Joko. And... Going to pressure on in. Well, you see the plan here from Colville. Getting aggressive. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, this puts Fear under pressure to do something. Mm -hmm. And if you think that Fear's hand is really reactive against spells with something like Spell Caller, just do this and, you know, put the pressure on him to respond first. Yep. 
Harlan's going to sacrifice a fetch land. Going to fall down to at least nine. We'll see how much lower he's going to go. And that is a magic number in this spot because it means that next turn's end of turn, activate Gilded Goose, untap, transform, and all presents lethal. So now Fear is really under the gun to do something. Well, step one is getting a hollowed fountain. I think we might see Ice Fang Quaddle maybe hang back on uh, hang back on defense here. What do we got now? It's going to be a Path to Exile. It's going to take care of a food token. So Koval will do a little bit of searching, get himself another snow-covered island. We'll head back over to Harlan. Harlan and Brian are players that have worked together on Urza decks in the past. Mm -hmm. So they know each other well. They both play a lot on the SED Tour as well. Both have had a ton of success here. So it's always fun to see players of this caliber on the SED Tour square off against each other in any matchup. But this one can certainly be an intricate one. That'll be another Misty Rainforest and just passing the turn as Ice Fang Quaddle is going to hang back on defense. So here's the predictable Gilded Goose activation to generate a food token. And now Koval will untap. And he'll sacrifice a fetch land on his upkeep. He's going to go get Mystic Sanctuary. The requisite islands are on the battlefield. And his target is Metallic Rebuke. That'll go on top of the deck, and that's what he'll draw for the turn. Yeah, it stands to reason here, if you're in Koval's spot, that Fear is trying to play towards two spells in one turn. Mm -hmm. It's really the only thing that could justify how passive his play has been up until this point, is trying to respond with reaction with counterspell backup or what have you. So even if the, the Rebuke looks a little suspect with Fear having five mana available uh, his play has been so passive that you got to believe there's something going on there well this is very clearly an attempt to resolve Urza and okay well that'll take care of that yeah could play back against the spell caller with the rebuke uh, how's your draw prediction looking there bud actually not that bad because we uh -huh. have the other team up a game yeah and the middle match still in game one okay Okay, you know, it's 42 minutes in. That Same game here. was also... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, it's, eight, it's, it's almost eight minutes in. That was a one-player game we just watched. Oh, so I watched it. Oh, yeah. Brian Colville. <laughs> I don't think we're going to a draw. Okay. But you know what? We'll circle back. Just like right. you said, we'll Obviously, circle back. Obviously, draws are not frequent enough that it should be weighted as a 50-50 bet. Come on. Come on what? I'm just taking your words and using them against you. Yep. That's all that's happening right now. So. What are we talking about? We'll get to the sideboards here in just a second. But Colville making that one look pretty easy with his Salt Eye Urza deck. Very quickly up a game over Bant Snowblade. Snowblade, of course, means that Harlan Fear does have Stoneforge Mystics, his equipment of choice, Sword of Feast and Famine, and Batter Skull here this weekend. We'll see if he's got any equipment in his sideboard as well in just a moment. But while we wait, we will actually just start here with Harlan Fierce Cyborg. We'll have it on the screen for you folks in just a moment. Two Veil Summer, two copies of In Thin Ice. A Disdainful Stroke, two Winds of Abandon, three Ashiok Dream Render, two Mystical Dispute, two Dismember, and one Vendillion Click. Just the most reactive, most boring sideboard imaginable. Yeah, I'm into the disputes. I'm into Disdainful Stroke, even if it's pretty narrow. And I'm into Vendillion Click. Oh, you like a V-Click here? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's just... It's not the worst card against Oko. Um, the Urza decks only have so many relevant cards. Uh, it, it is good in spots where Cobalt is not willing to cooperate and play in your spell coil or something to do with your mana. Yeah, I I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of cards that just pick it off for free. Okay. You know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, for Cobalt's side, three Ashok Dream Render, three Fatal Push, excuse me, three Fatal Push, two Ceremonies for Rejection, two Mystical Disputes of his own, so I imagine you like those, along with the Grafficker's Cage, a Dismember, a Veil of Summer, a Tireless Tracker. An Assassin's Trophy. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, you know, Veil Summer, Tireless Tracker, Mystical Disputes, maybe Assassin's Trophy, all reasonable here. 
lot of different. The, the question that's always kind of interesting to me is, what are players taking out in this matchup? Hmm. I don't know. You've got so much. I mean, you can afford to do some shaving, I think, on the sort of architectural cards. Like, do you the games do you, go on for a long time? Do you want a card like Emery after sideboard? Maybe not. You know, like, like part of me can rationalize yes, where it's a value engine with Astrolabe or um, Bobble or something like that. And part of me is just like, eh, they're probably going to bring an answer for it anyway. Well, also, if the games go on for a long time and feature a lot of removal, I, c I can even buy things like cutting one copy of Mox Opal. Just the low-impact cards. If the game drags on for a long time, it's legendary. They have more ways post-board to, to blunt your fast draws involving banning acceleration. You can do a little bit of trimming, I think, with, with that sort of stuff, too. That's what I'm speaking to with the architecture. Okay. The game's going to go on for a long time. Uh, you need less of that stuff, especially if your opponent can, can fend off your most explosive starts with things like spy removal and mystical dispute and so forth. Totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. We'll see how these players did sideboard as they get ready here for game number two. But very quickly, we do want to go over Star City Games Premium and how you can become a member. You can become a Star City Games Premium member today and receive instant access to these exclusive benefits, which, believe it or not, Patrick is happy to shill. 5% off sealed products, including pre-orders of the upcoming set. 10% 10 10 off singles, including singles from the upcoming set. 15% off supplies, such as sleeves, to put on the new cards that you're getting, 5 or 10% off, depending if you're purchasing it via sealed product or singles. Plus exclusive content, including from me. I'm writing now on the regular. Mm -hmm. Only way you can read it. Can't get it for free. No more doing this for free. Go.sarcgames.com slash premium. Become a member today. Savings and exclusive content all over the website. The hard sell. Well done. Proud of you. No more doing this for free. Yep. He's in. He's in, folks. And we're about to begin to game number two here between Brian Colville and Harlan Fear. Looks like Danny Jessup won game number one pretty quickly there over James Mangus in the Simic Urza versus Salt Eye Urza semi mirror. And then we are going deep into game number one, apparently, here between Zach Allen playing Salt Eye Titan and Alex Bastecki playing Bant Snowblade. That Salt Eye Titan deck takes a little while to win. It's not like you're typical Titan shift as strategies emphasis on the shift for scape shift not present in those decks no field of the dead yes field of the dead pretty good against Urza can go wide against Oko and it gets a construct token mm -hmm. not an easy card for Urza to fight against not really a lot of cards that interact with non-basic lands and so you can win these very long games even against the good Urza stuff because Field of the Dead plus land drops often is better than the best thing they can do. Zach Allen wins game number one there with Salt Eye Titan against Alex Pistecki playing Bant Snowblade. How about that draw? Still looking good. <laughs> Hardly going to play a Noble Hierarch to kick things off. There's a Mishra's Bobble. Going to sack that. Take a look at his top card here, O'Brien. And it looks like he's just going to keep that instead of fetching it away. So it must be something that he's happy with as we head back over to Harlan, who will play a snow-covered plains. This is a Stoneforge Mystic. And it's time to go digging for an equipment. Harlan was lacking this in game number one. He has the very powerful core artificer here in game number two. Going to dial up a sword and feast in famine. And another Man Accelerant there in Birds of Paradise. So it's clear to me one of the things Harlan's putting a priority on with this build of his deck is getting out ahead of his opponent mana-wise. Definitely. I mean, it's uh, leverage is your best stuff on the play and gives you a hope of keeping up on the draw. And the Urza decks are so flush with Man Acceleration that often the way they beat you is just I have three mana on turn two, I have four mana on turn three, and I'm playing a powerful card, and it's just very hard to keep up with that unless you have your own Man Acceleration. Yeah. Arlen here with a land drop, threatening to be able to equip Sword onto a creature next turn. This is an Arkham's Astrolabe. That is a Arkham's Astrolabe. And you said a land drop allows him to deploy Sword right now on a creature and hit. Right. 
Yes. Now, right now, he can, of course, deploy sword and equip it onto something, but in order to do that, Stoneforge Mystic would be tapped, and then the mana accelerants would be tapped as well for the equipping cost. So that's why another mana source is necessary, but it looks like Harlan may be missing it because uh, I'm led to believe he probably would have done that by now. Yeah, I think we would have seen it. Well, that's pretty good. Sure. That mm. Jace the Mind Sculptor plays. Not a bad Constellation prize. Is Jace will allow Harlan to brainstorm. And I think we're going to see a repeat of what we saw in game number one, just with the roles reversed here, of Harlan getting ahead enough on the battlefield early enough that he does not need to cast any more spells. The burn is on Cobalt to try to catch up here, and then he plays into Fear's reaction. Well, Fetchland is going to end the turn there for Harlan first. So we head back over to Brian. He'll play Burning Pool untapped. Well, seen this card before. Mm -hmm. Here's Oko. Not the best spot for it, though. Well, I've seen worse. The ability here to go after Jace, which is what I imagine is being attacked, puts Harlan in a rock and a hard place with regards to, do you want to block with Stoneforge Mystic? That was something you were probably looking to slide equipment in with. Or do you want to lose your Jace? I'm guessing you want to block with your Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. It's really powerful to brainstorm or unsummon, <laughs> as the situation demands. Well, the original best, best Planeswalker of all time, Jace the Mind Sculptor, still might be the best. I think these are the two best Planeswalkers of all time right now, though, on the battlefield, duking it out against each other. Oko has become a multi-format superstar. I mean, literally from standard to vintage, day one, in a way that... I don't think any Planeswalker ever has. Down since. Day one-ish. It's an unbelievable magic card. It is definitely hard to believe. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> no argument there. Yeah. Lofted that, struggle. One up. Lofted that one up I for you. I struggle to believe it. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. I know you do. Here's a brainstorm. <laughs> Two, <laughs> three. Harlan, he did not find the land. You saw a little bit of body language there. He was looking to find a land to be able to play an equip sword, attack something. Obviously, you're not going to kill Oko with the hit, so you hit your you hit your opponent, you untap your lands, and you do more stuff. Yeah. But he did not find that land. It would be a huge rebate. I mean, the, the consolation prize here of having five mana being at least... Close to parity, if not slightly out on the battlefield, and a handful of spells is not bad. But yes, one land there would have uh, blown the doors wide open, I think. Here's three mana. Well, Oko's not a bad constellation prize, as mentioned. So here is the powerful Planeswalker, the old 1 2 here from Harlan. The Planeswalker's going up to five. It's going to make a. It's actually going to make an elk, pardon me. Here's a Noble Hierarch. Well, that is going to be enough to kill the Oko. Three damage plus two Exalted Triggers means it's going to be a five total. And goodbye, Thief of Crowns. I'd argue that's a better turn than even getting Sword onto something. I think I may agree. And you have a creature to defend your Planeswalkers. Oh, it's all looking good. Yeah. That's the power of Mana Acceleration, folks. Especially in creatures at times. There are trade-offs, of course. Those creatures can be killed via removal of all shapes and sizes, but situations like this, they're providing a blocker, acceleration, and maybe a little bit later in the game, an attacker. Because there is Dismember. No panic here for Koval, though, as he will clear out the blocker and now clear out the Jace and simply pass the turn back over to Harlan Fear. Harlan will draw a card. Oko's going to go up to seven as it generates a food token. We're going to head back over to Colville with Harlan suspiciously leaving mana up. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, what, oh, what could it be? Here's a Gilded Goose. Mystic Sanctuary is going to put Dismember on top of the deck. That's the requisite 
islands are on the battlefield. That card's a real crackerjack, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Here's Ice Fang Quaddle. Hard little draw. I was curious if he was going to leave that card in or not. He was elected to. I think it's important to keep in the deck if you're going to keep the equipment in. Yeah, I mean, the also, opportunity cost is so low. It replaces itself, everything else. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. Clearly, it's not a bad card. No, hard for it to be bad. And we've seen a couple turns here really hedge, uh, really hop around battling over planeswalkers, too. And it can do good work offense and defense. Mm hmm. Fear quite a bit to think about on this turn is Koval is behind this game, but he is starting to catch up as there's a Birds of Paradise. <laughs> See where Fear wants to go next. He still has that sword. He'll turn this into an elk. I mean, if we're both sitting here with a lot of mana and, and Fear has Spellcaller in hand, I'm a big fan of well, much of we, like we saw from Koval in the first game, of just pressure the other player and force them to respond first. Fear's strong position is only going to get stronger with Oko on the battlefield, so just put the bird on Koval to do something and respond from there. Yeah, I would say that there's some um, there's some value in being the aggressor in this style of matchup, putting your opponent on the back foot, especially when you do have spell caller in your deck to make your opponent play into things they really prefer not to play into. Right. You you want to force them to play at inopportune times, and with the Urza decks especially, force them to play on their main phase, which is where a lot of their best cards are, their best ways of catching up. And Brian will play a Breeding Pool tapped and simply pass the turn back, while Harlan is thinking about cracking that windswept teeth, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So, a little fetch land action here. That is a snow-covered forest. And there will be no follow-up. So we'll head back over to Harlan Fear now. He'll draw a card. Getting ourselves into a pretty healthy mid-game right now. I think it's looking a little bit better than maybe 10 minutes ago regarding my draw position. Mm. Look at you perk up in your chair. Don't see a lot of updates on the old game You know, scores. I haven't really seen an update to the old uh, scoreboard there for... Uh, been a little bit. Yeah. Been a little bit. Been a hot and this minute. game, going to be some turns. Yes. <laughs> going to be well, some Well, Koval, Koval is at nine. A couple of elks out here. May not be as many turns as you think. You know what? Beatdowns. That's what we're here for. At least that's what I'm here for. Looks like Elks are going to attempt to trade. And Koval is reaching for some mana. He'll play a dismember. Some trades some life changes, and ultimately, Harlan still looks to be at least a little bit ahead. Yeah, still same deal as before. Doesn't bode well for your draw. Talking about they're going to game three. Are you sure about that? You want them to go to game three around minute 15 or so, not minute 25. See a big draw here from Koval. Should one exist? I'm not so sure. Mystical Dispute will be played, and now Metallic Rebuke. That's going to take care of the very problematic Teferi, especially when you have that kind of permission in your hand. Koval's last card in hand is a Cryptic Command. So a big draw step here. Cryptic Command's worth at least a minute here. <laughs> sure is. I would shave a minute out. Yeah. I'm going to keep my eyes on the clock starting now. 25, 48. When do you think Koval cast the Cryptic Command? You right before to, you, combat. You need it to be at least 25, 
38. No, hold on. 24, 48. Mm. Oh. Ah, a little mm -hmm. too quick. A little too quick. When all said and done, Spellcore is going to eat that and the game. Holland Fear is going to tie things up here against Brian Colville as Bant Snowblade and Salt Iris are getting ready to go to game number three with just about 25 minutes left here, partner. Mm -hmm. Just about 25 minutes left. No updates on the other two matches. Doesn't appear to have any updates on the other two matches just yet, but when we do, we will, of course, let you know. We will let you know. And, you know, if we, if we go to a draw, not going to be able to get to that preview card. That's a shame. And shill out the premium. That's $7 for sure. $7.99. $7.99. Well, uh, discounts. Steven Green, who's walking by, he's a premium member. You better believe he is. Yeah. At, at premium. There, there he is. He just said it. Yeah, yeah. I am. You all, give me, you all gave me bootleg premium. I can read the articles. Okay. But uh, I don't get any discounts on the website. Yeah, $7.99. You think what? You don't understand how the promotion works? Yeah, or? I mean... Do you not understand how it works? I don't know what I'm going to... Do you have the graphic? Do you have I, the graphic? I don't even know what I'm going to do. Do you understand how it works? With the premium subscription, I can already read my own articles. Well... I just, oh, I just opened it up on my computer. I know it doesn't have the price on the graphic. Exclusive we're going to get that updated. Seven ninety nine a month. Yeah. Exclusive content. But also, but also, you have to pay a seven ninety nine to, to get that stuff, too. Right. Seven yeah. ninety nine a month yeah. gets you all of this. Exclusive content... We already went over this once. 5% off seal product. Yeah. Exclusive content from me plus others. I, yes, yes. 5% yes. off seal product. 10% off singles. 15% off supplies over at slash premium. So that wasn't supposed to be the ad read right now. I just brought it up for you real quick just to make sure that you know how you get the discounts. Right. I am getting. Sure. Well, have we a conversation we with just read that ad. Going to have a conversation with Pete. No, that goes to me. And then I go. Oh, you're gonna. Oh, then I oh go. okay. You're gonna. I'm the liaison. You're gonna. You're gonna cut me liaison. off. You're gonna cut me off then, huh? No, no, no. Just every company has a hierarchy, right? You got to go through the gatekeeper. That's me. It's like Street Fighter. Here, let me give you. Let me give you a, a description you can understand. I'm Balrog. I'm trying to get for the a lot for a lot of different reasons. I'm Balrog. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm Balrog in this example. I'm a Vega of sorts. But uh, no, you strike me as kind of Dulcim here. No. You got to get through me to get to M Bison, bud. No, in a different, a, a different life, could I have been uh, a cage fighter at a nightclub where people are dancing and drinking? Absolutely. Could you have been a claw wielding, yes. cage fighting narcissist? Yes. When I look okay. at when I look at Vega's Vega's uh, background, yep. it's like I easily easily could imagine. Okay. This. Okay. Could have gone a couple different ways. Okay. I ended up here, for better or worse. <laughs> could have been could have been something different. Let's talk about the schedule. Let's talk about the schedule. Well, well you pile can't. shuffle's good for the draw. That's true. <laughs> Just run down the old shot clock here. We're in Columbus <laughs> to start 2020. Then we're going to head back to Knoxville. As the tour has not been there for a long time. Happy to be back. That'll be a modern open. February, flush with opens. Richmond, Philadelphia, and Indianapolis. After that, we'll have the regional championships. That will be modern, and you can head over to go.starcygames.com slash regionals for more information when we get a little bit closer to that event. After that, Baltimore and Syracuse. You may notice that a lot of these events do not have a format underneath it. After Knoxville, all this stuff is TBD. We'll have announcements on those formats relatively soon. Baltimore, Syracuse, and then to close out Season 1, which is a long one, in April, we go to Atlanta and Worcester. May gets to Cincinnati, Louisville, and Philadelphia. And that will take us to SEG Con Summer featuring the Star City Games Invitational. That will be June 11th through the 14th. Might be leaning into the old uh, Pioneer spoiler alert. It's a good format. Interesting. It's a good format. Interesting. It's a really good format. That's what I'll tell you. I mean, I got to dust off. I already got my, uh, what are they What are they called? Bone Shrew Giants? What do you call that? The bone, what's the shock guy? No, I know. What did you bone say? Bone chewer giant? Bone chewer? It's bone crusher giant. Bone crusher. Okay. Close enough. I give you, I give I you, I'll, give you I'll give you a million dollars if you can name the adventure. Uh, Stomp? Damn it. Darn it. All right, so uh, that will be one million dollars. That's PayPal. <laughs> what's your PayPal? Yeah, you, hit, you, hit know, you know what? I'll get you real premium now. Yeah, okay, there, good. There you go. We'll yeah, call it even. If you give me the, the non- if we'll you call give me the even. non chiseled version of premium, yeah. I guarantee you I'll get my million dollars. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
All right, well, we got an update. Stock deck Danny Jessup played Simic Urza 1-2-0. A story of his career right there. Defeated James Magnus. Looks like we're going to be moving over to Bastecki versus Zach Allen per the instruction of Todd Anderson, who's in our future match area, helping to make sure the process is smooth. Mm -hmm. How do you know that it's Stomp, but you think it's Bone Chewer Giant? Because uh, I've cast Stomp a lot more than this creature. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that makes some sense. Just your 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 card knowledge is so wild and all over the place. I really never know what to expect. Mm -hmm. All right, well this one's over. I guess I lose for for who? You for think it, you think it's bad here for the and as an extension of that, his team. Yes. Yes, Zach Allen has a Primeval Titan, a couple copies of Field of the Dead, four Justin Parnell zombie tokens, along with a Zach, excuse me, a Sam Black token of some type. It's a clue from Tireless Tracker, I presume. Is that Spell Sir Sprite? Not I some uh, click. See, there it is again. There you, go. Click. there you go. No Stomp thinks that's a Spell Stutter Sprite. Just, you're all over. You're, you're a total wild card. Mm -hmm. That's why it's fun to play the card game now. <laughs> <laughs> could probably name most cards in Arabian Nights. Don't think you could name five adventure cards. No. <laughs> Can you name three? Adventure cards? Yeah. Stomp. Petty theft. That's two. Hmm. Give me a moment on this one. Okay. Be really nice if Pastecki could do something here to fill in the fill in the action a little bit. No, I'll take care of that. I'll take care of that. Pastecki's gonna mm. put a card back on top of his deck. There you go. Can the big the, the one I'm trying to the, the one I want you to get is Love Struck Beast, but I, I know I you don't think, know it. I'm thinking about that one because man, have I lost to that card a lot. Yeah, but That's I know you one. don't know it. Cause like very not an, I don't want to say very few, but not a lot of people know it. People just is, say it's is Battle Rush one of them. The, what's the plus two plus zero on Rimrock? It's not. It's not Battle Rush. You're close. You're very, it even starts with a B. Here's a Teferi. Here's your Teferi. Okay. Time Raveler. We're not, our director has told us that he's got Love Struck Beast queued up, not going to bring it up, not going to bail you out. You've got two on the tip of your tongue here with Love Struck Beast and Rimrock Knight. The, sh the, 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 shatter, the shatter guy also is on the tip of my tongue. Mm -hmm. Here comes V Click in the air. Uh, Zach Allen's going to fall down to three. Pass the turn back. What did I say? What did I say the Rimrock Knight was? What was my guess? I'll try not to say what it actually is. Is it Blood Rush? Nope, that's not it. I don't have it. I'm tapping out. All I right. don't want to think about this anymore. All right. All right. Love Struck Beast is Heart's Desire. Never would have gotten that. I, I knew that. Boulder Rush. Boulder Rush. Is what you're thinking for yeah. Rimrock, uh, Rimrock Knight. That's right. But you know what? Not bad. You know what? Honestly, not bad. Here's a summoner's pack. Howmph. I'm going to eat that. Crater hoof. But, oh. Big hooves. Oh. It's good with um, zombies. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, no, Zach. Yeah, that's, your, that's, you, that's yours. You get that. I presume he can cast that Crater Hoof Behemoth. Yes, the, I mean, he's got that's, A plus a castle, Garenbridge. That's that's my thought right it's now. It's a million. Yeah. Alex, it's a million. There's no reason to do the math. Yeah. That's going to do it. <laughs> Zach Allen's going to win this game of match here over Alex Pastecki for his team of Danny Jessup, Zach Allen, Harlan Fierce, Simic Urza, Salty Titan, Bad Snowblade, winner, winner, uh, Salmon and New England Clam Chowder dinner. dinner. There we go. Zach Allen, Harlan Fear, Danny Jess up there. Moving on to 5 and 0. Oh. And for those of you keeping up with if this match was a draw or not, just want to confirm it wasn't. Yep. Yes. Anyway, let's bring it on back. Pretty